Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and good afternoon for the others who have uh, started their afternoon. I would like to welcome you all to this new encounter uh, at the shores of translation, and we are very pleased and delighted to welcome uh, a guest speaker who is a professor of literature, poetry, and translation. And uh, he is, again, uh, a friend of mine. We have traveled together to so many uh, countries, and I have enjoyed his company and enjoyed also the knowledge that he has about uh, literature, poetry, and especially about translation which is an umbrella for perhaps everything and this is my own conviction uh, he is here today to speak about the translation between unrelated languages he's going to pinpoint some uh, challenges and come up with some concrete uh, suggestions and uh, practical tips to students and novice translators uh, I would like to say that literary translation or translating creativity is omnipresent in all texts um, this even though they are scientific or technical but still there are so many spots where we need we are faced with those um, I don't like to call them challenges but uh, 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 spots that are stirring uh, or provoking our creative source and we would love to transfer the, the message in a creative way uh, our guest speaker has a creative mind and a poetic mind as well uh, and uh, he is also fond of Arabic literature and he has deep understanding of Arabic uh, texts and uh, I know that he has passion for uh, that heritage uh, in addition to his uh, area of expertise which is uh, English uh, so he is a professor of poetry as I said and translation at the faculty or the college of uh, arts uh, at in la manuba or humanities he has published extensively on poetry and translation and one of his major interests is pedagogical translation how translation is being taught um, and uh, i know that uh, i uh, have had very fruitful discussions with him uh, on our uh, travels. Uh, Professor Mansouri uh, is very well known here in Tunisia and he has uh, two or three books that are being used uh, by students and uh, I um, I received very good feedback from students that the two books are very handy for them. So this is our guest and he is going to speak about translation between unrelated languages, challenges and tips. The floor is yours, Professor Mansouri. Thank you very much, uh, dear friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Salhi. It gives me a uh, great pleasure to be with you today. Uh, great to see that uh, Maha is also uh, with us. So, hello, Maha. And. Minawari uh, <laughs> Muhammad. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like uh, to start this uh, to share with you a few uh, uh, challenges. I would like you to just try your hand at these. One is uh, a bit of a text that says the genie is out of the bottle. The other one is damn deal in which we have the curse damn but also we have 
the water dam. The other uh, phrase is fair game. Just think of these as I proceed with the uh, uh, presentation. The other term is al riddatu al binau Al-Hirak, Shabbiha, Ikhwani, Fawra, Innahu Kabiruhum. The English phrase, the Irish backstop emerging in the wake of Brexit. Al-Fardu al-Hashud, you encounter this phrase and then try your hand at it. See how much trouble that will give you. Anti-conformist. Is an anti-conformist mutamarridun ala al-a'raf am hal huwa mukhalifun lil a'raf? Notional versus factual. Look at this bit of sentence. Review notional allocations of the additional funding to priority sectors with commitment to review actual allocations in due course. Is notional? Does it contain a, a, a spelling mistake? Is it national? Or is it actually notional? Then we will check this. To be legitimate game four. The general public thought at the time that if uh, Clinton calls Trump sexist, then the former president Bill Clinton's behavior was legitimate game for uh, commentary and questions. What's the meaning of game here? Example 10. لَقَدْ خَبِرَ الْحَيَاةَ وَسَارَ يُمَيِّزُ بَيْنَ الْأَخْرِيَارِ وَالْأَشْرَارِ وَالْمُخَادِعِينَ وَالصَّادِقِينَ At first blush, we notice a problem with parallelism. The next, the last bit of the of the uh, sentence should go was wal mukhadi'in in order to be in line with al akhyari wal ashrar. Do we, as inter as translators, have authority to intervene there? I believe we we do have that uh, authority. So I, these are examples that I just thought I would share with you, and then you may meditate on 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 these challenges as we go. Later on, if you want, I can propose to you my concoction uh, in relation to, uh, you know, possible ways of, of, uh, of translating uh, these. So the two unrelated languages, as you may have guessed, I will talk about are Arabic and English. The challenges are mostly gleaned from student and supervisory work from publications, media, and other, and from personal encounters with texts. Uh, encounters is a term uh, dear to uh, <laughs> Dr. Hamoud Asar. Uh, so my main interest then is to highlight uh, a few hurdles and suggest ways of coping with them. So for today's talk then, I thought I'd share with you those major challenges, but that are really cases of particular difficulty plus two minor challenges pertaining to lack of second reading. Uh, I would insist on the importance of second reading uh, in the analysis of literary texts, but also in ways of handling, uh, you know, translation texts. Second reading is key. Some of the challenges are likely to be encountered also in both translation and interpreting. As a caveat, a caveat is uh, a term that means in Arabic something like women bab al tahdir or left al intibah. So, as a caveat, let's remember that the ideal of equivalence has of late been put into question. Some people are questioning equivalence, others are, are questioning uh, functionalism, and uh, there's a third position. Uh, that proposes a corrective to functionalism. Uh, Nord is one of, of, of the speakers on, 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 on our list. 
has developed this in uh, 2011. How to introduce a measure of loyalty into, uh, you know, uh, functionalism so that it can take into consideration the responsibility of the interpreter with regard to the various other partners, those that commissioned the translation, the recipients of the, of, of the work, uh, and, and things like that. Uh, this also comes in the wake of uh, very harsh attacks on, on translators who can uh, be paid by anyone to translate anything. Pay um, uh, my guess calls them uh, mercenary experts. Uh, yeah, so you can hire one of them and they can produce to you uh, what you want. You can eat. They can even produce to you uh, a made-to-measure uh, uh, translation of the Koran uh, according to your, uh, you know, wish list. Uh, so, you know, in, in view of, of all this, that then developed that notion of uh, special responsibility with regard with regard to the partners, uh, including, as I said, source text author, client, um, commissioner of the translation. Uh, this concept of, of, of loyalty differs a little bit from the old concept of fidelity, that is the intertextual relationship. By intertextual, I mean a relationship between two texts. A source, a source text and, and a target text. And, and it tends to refer mainly to linguistic uh, or stylistic similarity between the, the, the two texts. Um, Nord says that this takes place regardless of the communicative intentions or of the expectations uh, involved. So now to the, uh, to the challenges. Uh, there are concepts that are quite specific to the Arabic culture and that have no, between inverted commas, direct equivalent in English. So these terms are called non-lexicalized terms in English. We have uh, uh, idda. Now, when you meet with idda in a text, it will take you something like uh, uh, 12 words at least. To, to, you know, to get the meaning across. Uh, the meaning is a legally prescribed period of waiting during which a woman may not remarry after being widowed or divorced. You have the term bina uh, uh, in, in, in uh, Islamic jurisprudence, and that means the consummation of, of marriage. Uh, I happen to have seen this as consumption of marriage. Um, the context is different. Here it is consummation. Um, and of course, you can get the other meaning uh, still. Uh, now, what happens in these cases, many theoreticians and, and, and uh, practitioners uh, advise us to use a gloss. Transliterate, for instance, and then add a gloss. Many recommend uh, that the gloss should uh, uh, abide by, you know, the uh, uh, requirements of economy, that is, being succinct. But if I had a term like jihad to, 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 to translate, I could, of course, transliterate jihad but it wouldn't do to simply say the equivalent of holy war. You know, there's a lot to be said about this. And let's think also that, you know, our, our, our recipient, our client, our reader, of course, but our partner, our client, may not be just immediate interest-minded. They could be interested in, in, you know, more information about this and, of course, we can indulge in a, in, a, in a footnote, and we can also make, you know, reference to, uh, you know, other additional documents so that you can grasp the full meaning of the word jihad and also how this, uh, you know, changes uh, in significance according to, uh, you know, uh, time 
and, and, and user. Uh, I'll move on to, to the next, because there's much that, that one can say about this, but then I, I would move on, I'm, I'm aware of time. Uh, there are sub subtle appellations or references or allusions in Arabic that are so local that they can only be unpacked by one quite familiar with the source culture. I mean, here's things like Zabaniyatul Nidam, or Zabaniyatul Haraka, the, the, the henchman, or Al Mutawa, uh, is that an administration staff? Uh, and and, and is, is this the police? Uh, is this a morality police? Uh, does he belong to a committee for the promotion of virtue and the prevention of vice? Uh, can it be translated into English by uh, the vice squad? Uh, you know, things like that. We really need to go into uh, that culture and see what is the, uh, the you know, the, the significance of, 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 of such terms within that particular, uh, particular culture. Uh, what to make of this, for example, when it appears uh, later under Bashir as the public order police? What are the overlaps between public order police and morality police? Uh, there's Al Hirak, of course, social unrest in Algeria, on which you need, you know, uh, to give more substance in, in your footnote. And the Shabiha. Uh, you may say Shabiha, you may transliterate Shabiha. Shabiha has been tra transliterated in many documents, in the media mainly. But it would be good in a text to. to, to uh, um, you know, remind of the connection with ghosts in, 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 in Shabiha, and probably also, in addition to saying that this is a pro-regime militia, probably to add that it is a militia that acts with impunity. You know, you, 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 as, a, as, a, as a, a translator with agency, you, you, you can't do this. Um, you have, of course, other uh, terms like Islam uh, uh, and Nidham. Uh, you have also, you know, terms like uh, Fawra, which I mentioned earlier on. S and, and this is one of the, the you know, uh, it comes under the third type of challenge, uh, locally devised terms for use on the sidelines of a political, social, or economic event or change. By change, I mean something like, you know, the Arab Spring uh, with, with, with terms that, that have come in the wake of this. But there are things like Azlamun Nidam, or Aytamun Nidam, you know, the Stooges or the Minions or the Lackeys. Uh, there's the term Ikhwani. Uh, is it just, uh, is, is Ikhwani a Muslim brother or is Ikhwani uh, a, a member of the Muslim Brotherhood? Uh, you know, it's up to me as a translator to, to choose, but also uh, I, I, I'm also custodian, I believe, over, you know, uh, how a meaning is perceived in a given uh, cultural society. Fawra. Fawra is, is, is a blend of the words Fawra, anarchy, and Thawra, uh, revolution. I need to uh, sort of unpack this for, for, for my reader. What's the Irish backstop? The Irish backstop, I, it re, this really gave me a hard time. I proposed a text on Brexit to my students and it gave us all, the students and myself, a very hard time. Uh, uh, I had to go and, you know, read the media, uh, try to grasp the meaning of Irish backstop but it's, it's really a, a, a very difficult word to grasp. Anyway, uh, after much trouble with it, I thought I would propose Al-Hudud Al-Qati'ah Bayna Irlanda Shamaliya wa Jumhuriyat Irlanda. Al-Hudud Al-Qati'ah Hiya Hududun Fil Madi Lakinna Lam Takun Qati'ah Lam Yakun Yudfa'u Fiha Mathalan Dhariba Ila Ghairi Dhali Salam It was something like, you know, tax-free, but then it was burdened with tax, uh, or is likely to be burdened with tax. There are rhetorical devices. This is the fourth challenge, rhetorical devices. How do we deal with rhetorical devices? And I would like to speak about pun. The first pun is, is, is on your list there. 
genie out of the bottle. You know, genie refers to a person. And there's the genie index, the index of genie. It, it is meant to measure the distribution of wealth in a given society, in a given economy. Now, when the genie comes out of the bottle, I will have also to think of the genie spelled G-E-N-I-E. أي المارد والمارد الآن أفلت من تلك القنينة التي هو موجود فيها. ف genie out of the bottle will have to take into consideration that play on words. Genie, the person, and genie or genie, the index, and, and, and the genie that comes out of the bottle. Damn deal. Dam deal was used to refer to the to the to the dam a nahda that uh, is projected to be constructed by Ethiopia, and how this is going to cause a protracted that is a very long uh, uh, nagging uh, uh, crisis between um, Egypt and and, and and Ethiopia. So uh, the, the the deal about the dam was called dam deal. So dam deal. We really have to take the, the, the reading of dam deed, we have to take into consideration the dam in the dam, in the curse, that is the D-A-M in the D-A-M-N, and of course the, 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 uh, the, 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 the adjective dam, which means accursed, something like this. So maybe the translation would take these two meanings of, of, of these two aspects of the pun or these two rhetorical forces in, in, in the pun with one meaning plus another meaning plus an innuendo. It's that innuendo. It, the innuendo here is that the deal is la'in, is, is a damn deal. Then we could probably translate this by saying safhatu uh, then there's the, 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 the title Fair Game. Fair, F-A-R-E, game, uh, normally we, we encounter or we're more likely to encounter uh, F-A-I-R, a fair game. But here we have a fair game. A fair game here is a game between uh, companies uh, airline companies in the text to connive so that they can keep uh, ticket prices high. So the title could be translated to take into two consider into con sorry into consideration the two meanings plus the innuendo or the double entendre in in the expression maybe say ain al insafu fi lubat al tarifa. Then we have. Uh, Condensed advertisement strap lines, we, we, we're, we're familiar with this, you know, it's a very, very difficult task. You know, you have several functional elements entering into play to persuade and now, according to uh, uh, marketing lingo, to ensure retention. Uh, retention in the mind of, of, of the consumer, but also the business retaining its, its customers. So what do we make of digitally yours this is very compact it's a very special it's a genre in itself it's a very special special use language what to make of digitally yours how to handle naughty but nice with the play on words and the sound effects it, this was a, a, a an advertisement for ice cream naughty but nice and then uh, the other one, which is highly culture sensitive, submit to temptation. Uh, it, can this be translated across culture? Now, as someone involved in, you know, cross linguistic interlingual uh, mediation, we need really to uh, be as catchy as the original, but also mind uh, uh, the culture. Uh, I move on now to uh, challenge six, and I'm uh, more or less over uh, halfway through uh, this, uh, you know, talk. Uh, particularly pithy statements by high-caliber intellectuals. 
petty statement هو قول جزيل قد يكون أحيانا موجزا وجزيل في ذات الوقت by موجز إيجاز we, we, we mean in English terseness it's terse جزيل is pity pity with p i t h y one of these is uh, you know upon being asked to comment on the cause of arafat's illness a member of fatah the palestinian national liberation movement said lastu muttali'an al amr muqtasirun ala umana'i sirrihi wa umana'i saririhi this is quite pity as a statement i thought i would translate this by saying to this information i'm not privy that is this i'm not privy to this information only bureau keepers and bedside carers can tell i thought i would match the uh, uh, play on words in by bureau bedside keep care things like that and that the other statement upon arafat's death a, 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 um, a prominent member of fatah said about the deceased huwa fardun hashud how can we translate fardun hashud this is this is what we mean by ijaz wa jazala the definition probably of 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 balagha i thought i would say he was many in one but then as 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 uh, someone who is familiar with english I thought of a jack of all trades, but then I said, no, I'm not going to venture into a jack of all trades because a, because a jack of all trades reminds only of its sequel. And what's its sequel? Master of none. So I thought I would avoid this because it is not impressing at all. Then the other uh, challenge is ambivalence. Let's imagine someone from the Tunisian parliament saying being speaker of the parliament is an enriching experience. How do we read enriching experience? Is that innocent? Is this experience mufida or is it mutria? Or is it both? Again, here you have to, you know, do a lot of, 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 of uh, you know, contextualization about who, you know, gave the statement, in what context, and things like that. Daniel Ben Said, the philosopher and leader of the Trotskyist movement in France, wrote a book about Karl Marx entitled Marx L'Intempestif. How do we understand l'intempestif? Is the, is, does it mean disruptive? Does it mean inopportune? Does it mean stormy? Or does it mean the untimely thinker? The accepted translation tends to be the untimely uh, thinker. So uh, it was not pejorative at all uh, in the book. But here, of course, you need to read the whole book. You can't translate just, you know, from, from, from excerpts. And read about the book again. But now, uh, challenge eight is making sense of what is ambiguous or what looks like it is ambiguous. You remember early on uh, when I began the talk, I introduced to you a list of challenges. One of them has the, 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 the term uh, notional and... Um, I'm, I'm trying to get the, uh, the uh, well, okay, I'll drop this. Anyway, I, you know, the, the statement says, review notional allocations of the additional find, uh, funding to priority sectors with commitment to review actual allocations. So what makes you, un, you know, say for sure that notional is not national with a spelling error? It is the term actual. And in this context, we are reading backwards. So we go to, fact, to, to, to actual or, 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 or 
factual, that is real, and go back to notional to ascertain that notional is correct. Notional allocations happens to mean al i'timadatu al ismiyah. Ay, ma na'tamiduhu fil mizaniyati ismiyan. And actual al uh, allocations are the ones that are actually made. Fahiya idan al i'timadatu aw al taxisatu al fi'liyah. Then notional is a correct term. It's not to be, you know, no one shouldn't really rush into uh, correcting it. The other, um, uh, uh, you know, example is fair, is is game. Uh, he is a fair game too. When I looked up game, I just thought I I, I would you know see not not just you know, I knew that game meant lots of things, but I wanted to see uh, if anybody had to look up this in the dictionary at what point. In the dictionary, the 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 uh, the, the student would find. It. So I, I you know opened the uh, uh, you know I, I checked the uh, Merriam uh, Webster dictionary uh, to to check game. I found game play 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 etc. And then only towards the end I found that game meant also pray p r e y. So. The translation is not uh, uh, of game is not lerba. It is farisa hadaf said because game also means prey. Many, you know, well, a few of my students really had trouble with, with this. Also, they had trouble with minister. And when the minister inquired of him on a Sunday, he said. If I had to do it again, I would do it. So when the minister inquired of him on a Sunday, and then the fact of doing and not doing, this minister is not a minister in a, in, in a government. This minister is al qis and the context really makes it impossible for us to make a mistake. But some people can, you know, make mistakes even when the context is Im makes it impossible. Now, 10, making sense of what is poorly written, insufficiently revised. I think there's a, a dearth of research on this. So, you know, some documents are poorly written and we have to, you know, grapple with them. And other documents are insufficiently revised and we have to grapple with them. So unless you're, you're translating the sound and the fury uh, by, by uh, Faulkner or al Udwan by uh, Azdin al-Madani, uh, where stream of consciousness is the chief a narrative technique, your rendering must make sense. The dic dictum of garbage in, garbage out doesn't apply. Now, I mentioned also uh, uh, the, the, the lack of parallelism and, and where you have authority. Because this is making sense of what is uh, poorly uh, written or insufficiently uh, revised. I, I, I guess I have come to uh, uh, the end of, of my presentation, but I have a few uh, takeaways just to share with you uh, before the end. Uh, these are a, a few bullet points. Reflect on how words change meaning over time. Do not slight your doubts. When you have an uneasy feeling about something, mark it out for further consideration. Is game just play or could it mean something else? It does happen to also mean pray, Sayyidun, Farisa, etc. So trust sometimes your gut feelings about it. Say, I have doubts about this. I'm not uneasy. Call an expert when you're landed with a particularly difficult concept. Are we in the practice of calling an, uh, an expert? Have we ever called a doctor or a lawyer to say, could you please help me with this, with this concept? Or an engineer? Please help me with this concept. We need to, you know, do this. Get into the social, political, and even psychological fabric of the author or of the student. Add a dose of intuition based on your experience with people. I know the discourse markers, you know, that, you know, require 
you know, some inquisitiveness, additional inquisitiveness. And we sometimes are able to anticipate counter arguments uh, or to anticipate problems that students would encounter in class and, 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 and we can, you know, um, address these. Uh, the other point is make sure you take ownership of the text and pass on that ownership to the recipient. You tune in to and you are inside the tale. But again, it's important to take a guess at the recipient's concealed, hidden agenda or concealed criteria. Take into consideration, of course, the temporalities. Uh, the other element is, if listening is the key to interpretation, reading is the key to translation. And I have developed a whole uh, you know, piece of work on what I call forensic reading. Uh, um, maybe one day we will discuss the requirements of forensic reading. The other element is, or item is, paraphrase, as they say, is the army Swiss knife of communication. You know, the army Swiss knife, the word, the, the, the tool that can help you with everything. So maybe this one. Language may be a prison, but it is not captivity. محاولة المتواضعة لترجمة هذه هي أن أستخدم مصطلح سجن وحبس. قد لا يكون السجن حبسا بالضرورة. Exercise your authority as the one who knows both source and target culture. Language, this is the, my final word, language will never cease to surprise us and to delight us. And the latest is what I read during the uh, uh, marches in, in support of Floyd, uh, uh, rest in power uh, uh, rather than rest in peace. Thank you for your attention. And thank you, dear professor. Language, I repeat, will never cease to surprise us and delight us. Uh, and a session, al-habs, it is not always pejorative. Al-habs in particular. And we can say breathtaking is tahbis al-anfas. So, his beauty. Professor Mansouri, I want to thank you very much for your very insightful presentation and delightful performance. And the examples, the very concrete examples from English and Arabic, and perhaps also from French, are, have certainly won the minds and hearts of all the participants and they have invoked, I can see this from the comments, that they have invoked and stirred their imagination and invoked that creative force. And the takeaways are certainly doing a very valuable service to nov both novice and expert translators. With that, I will open it to the Q&A session, to the discussion. So I would like to invite you to uh, ask questions and or raise comments regarding this uh, very insightful presentation. I can see so many hands shown. I will give the floor first to Maha. Hello, Maha, and good afternoon. Uh, hello, Hamouda. Um, لو تسمح لي أتكلم بالعربي أنا كنت بتابع قائمة المشاركين وشايفة إنه exactly. كل الموجودين عرب. <laughs> exactly. This is what I wanted to say. You can ask uh, your questions in English or in Arabic, and I've done the same thing. مها ورأيت إن كل المشاركين هم عرب وبالتالي فالأسئلة تطرح رجاءً بالإنجليزية أو بالعربية. تفضل مها. Okay. شكرا جزيلا. Uh, 
اولا محموده انا عايزه اشكرك شكرا جزيلا على انه بالاضافه للطلبه بتوعك اللي هم المجموعه المستهدفه الاساسيه فتحت الباب للزملاء ان هم يحضروا المحاضرات دي فاول حاجه شكرا على كرمك دي نمره واحد نمره اثنين انا ما عنديش سؤال تحديدا لكن محمد حقيقي انا استمتعت ايام استمتاع بالمحاضره احنا اشتغلنا مع بعض كذا مره قبل كده لكن عمرنا ما اتكلمنا في الموضوعات اللي هي اللغويه البحته دي اللي هي فعلا بتخلي الواحد ينظر للغه بطريقه مختلفه فلو ما فيهاش يعني لو مش هتقل عليكم احب ان انا يعني لو متاح التسجيل بتاع المحاضره دي بالذات مش اي محاضره ثانيه المحاضره دي بالذات احب اسمعها ثاني فلغايه لما نلتقي يا محمد واخدك مع كوبايه قهوه ونقعد نتكلم مش هسيبك لو سمحتم لو عملتم المحاضره دي متاحه لغير الطلبه ارجوكم تحطوني في الاعتبار اكيد مها شكرا على الطلب شكرا على الملاحظات الجميله ولكن هناك شرط هنا انا اشتغلت مع الاستاذ محمد كثير من المرات وسافرنا مع بعض مثل ما قلت في المقدمه ونحن دائما ما نستمتع بهذا النقاش حول اللغة والثقافة والانتقال والرحلة والسفر فأنا دائما ما أرمي بنفسي إلى تلك المنطقة معه أما بالنسبة إلى التسجيل فممكن تدفعي له عشرة أيام شغل فأنا <تصفيق> لمحمد ويكون التسجيل إن شاء الله جاهز وكل عندك <تصفيق> يعني غالي غالي والطلب رخيص غالي <تصفيق> والطلب رخيص الله يخليكي <تصفيق> <تصفيق> اذا شكرا جزيلا مها شكرا جزيلا نحن أط... شكرا. آه كان اتفاق مع كل المشاركين مع بعض انه فقط انا ارد على النقطه هذه آه بعض المشاركين كان في عندهم تحفظ على نشر المحاضرات وهم لحسن الحظ قله قليله يعني تقريبا اثنين من بين 32 او 34 مشارك. ف ولكن هذه بشرى انه الاغلب بالمحاضرات اذا كان مش كل المحاضرات راح تنشر ان شاء الله في قناه يوتيوب هي قناه ترجمان. ولكن لكن تحتاج قليل من الوقت للاديتنج والكات اي قليل من المونتاج لانه فيها اشياء بعض المحاضرين رأوا أنها تحذف فصبركم علينا شوية وإن شاء الله كل شيء يكون عندكم مها شكرا جزيلا على الطلب وعلى حضورك المتميز دائما ده خبر ممتاز خبر ممتاز وشكرا جزيلا يا سيدي شكرا, شكراً. وائل بن علي شكرا مها شكرا جزيلا هاي دكتور منصوري it's a pleasure having you with us today and thanks for your presentation I really like it well My question is about translation authority and, subje uh, and subjectivity. And to make myself clear, I'm going to talk about your example of jihad. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, in this context, maybe you know that during the Soviet-Afghan war, the U.S. Cal called the Afghani resistance as Mujahideen. Mm -hmm. They even made an entire operation through the CIA to find and support them. However, mm -hmm. during the American-Iraqi war, Uh, the U.S. called the uh, Iraqi fighters as terrorists, not Mujahideen. I hope you can see the ambivalence here. This takes me to my uh, question, which is, can we consider ourselves translators if we are a part of the conflict and we are biased? And is it legitimate to take into consideration a, translator, uh, a translation made from a subjective point of view and if there is a political ideology embedded within the translation is it possible to consider to consider this translation or shall we call it something else and my last question do you think that power can affect terminology and translation and thank you very much thank you very much well uh, professor Mansour do you mind if we take two or Two more questions, and uh, you take them it, at once. Uh, yes, I, I I wrote down. This is a quite quite a mouthful, really. I mean, already, you know, you have three questions in in, okay. in this. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I I thought I would just simply uh, you know respond to this, and probably later on see how we can uh, you know uh, yes. arrange the uh, you know the grouping of questions. Um, 
Uh, well, you know, um, where it spoke about the you know translation authority and, and, and subjectivity, and how you know um, you know terms can be perceived by different parties at different moments differently. Let's not forget that the use of a term is never innocent. Any term that you use, this is never innocent. Whether you are on the side of the jihadis or whether you are on the side of the, the you know their, their, their enemies they have their own agendas when they you know uh, choose how to qualify themselves and the others have their agendas when they choose how to qualify others the relationship with power is 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 really a, a, an issue that needs to be addressed you know, if you have a, you know, a presence in the media, if you have authority over the media, then you can have the term, you can market the term, you can change the term, and then they will follow you, and then they will publish the way, that, you know, the way you like, uh, uh, you know, your term to be, uh, to be perceived. So, ideology is there, but also interest is there. Sometimes immediate interest, at other times long-term interest. If my immediate interest is now against the Taliban in, 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 uh, in Afghanistan, it may change, you know, within a few months, let's say, to a type of alliance. And then the term will change accordingly. So, you know, terms are not fixed. There's no fixity in this. Take, take the term, for example, explore. Uh, uh, well, no, escape. Initially, a term, the term escape for you know, the Soviet Union was, was, was problematic. Uh, the USSR, uh, it was problematic because you know, escape means, means escape to the West. So if you want to advertise uh, Hamamet, you don't say escape to Hamamet and send this to, to, to Russia. Uh, say explore. A beautiful hammermet, and that works much, much, much better than escape. Even though escape is a, is, is a term that talks to you know lovers of, of, of travel. So you see, you know, terms uh, you know uh, uh, change, and power can certainly uh, affect terminology. Whether we call certain works as translations, I think we there are certain works that we cannot call uh, translations. They are the writing of someone based on someone else's work. Uh, Alman Faluti used to call some of his uh, uh, narratives mawdu'ah. Mawdu'ah meaning that it is based on another story or another tale. So I guess some translations cannot be considered as translations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can see friends and colleagues here also are interested in this uh, uh, talk, in this session. Uh, Mervet, Saber, and then Sami. Please, Mervet. Aslama. Ahla wa sahla. Aslama. Doctor, <laughs> Doctor Mansour. The microphone is closed. Doctor? Mansour? Doctor Mansour, Doctor, the microphone is closed. دكتور منصور اي مفتوح الان يعني عم يعني مش عارفه والله يعني شرف ليا انه انا احضر مع حضرتك الو تقريبا عند دكتور منصوري ممكن الانترنت فيه مشكل هيم يس بارك الله فيك بارك الله فيك يا دكتور ربنا يكرمك ربنا يكرمك اشعر ب اولا اشكرك يا حموده ربنا يكرم اصلا واشكرك يا دكتور ولازم اعبر عن اعبر عن خيبه املي انه انا واحباطي انه انا قابلتك كل المرات دي وما حصلش انه احنا قعدنا واتكلمنا وتبادلنا المعلومات ولكن انا لن ابكي على اللبن المسكوب والمرات الجايه انا يعني تنفتح الامور وهنقعد ونشرب مش هنشرب قهوه هنشرب ماكياتو بنا وهنقعد ونحكي <تصفيق> ويعني ان شاء الله هنستفيد من حضرتك لانه ربنا يكرمك يا رب 
ربنا يكرمك شاكره جدا انا فعلا ما عنديش اسئله غير ان انا حبيت احجز معاد للمكياج واشكر حموده واشكرك على الفرصه اللي انت بتعطيها لنا ربنا يكرمكم جميعا شكرا ميرفت شكرا على الشكر وشكرا على زيارتك اللطيفه سامي مرحبا صباح الخير خير آه الانوار على على دعوه الصديق محمد المنصوري محمد انا اعتقد اننا السنه الماضيه تقريبا نفس اليوم كنا نتحدث انا واياك في منظمه العمل الدوليه في حفل المترجمين انا سعيد جدا بحضور هذه المحاضره الرائعه جدا والمليئه بال بالافكار المفيده المفيده بالنسبه للمترجمين سواء التحريريين او المترجمين الفوريين. Uh, am I allowed to take the floor in French? Is it possible or uh, should it be either in Arabic uh, or English? I th- would rather keep it to languages. Okay, to languages, very well. Yes, Arabic or English. Thank Then you. I would like to um, to um, tackle the issue of uh, knowing what a word means um, compared to another word in the same text because uh, at the end of the uh, of his um, um, intervention. Uh, the example that was led down by uh, Muhammad was uh, how do we understand the meaning of notional uh, versus factual and to not uh, um, mix it with national. And I, uh, I think that uh, uh, you said, Muhammad, that you understand that it is notional, notional and not national because of the presence of the uh, uh, the word factual in the same sentence or in the same uh, uh, text. I tend not to agree with you on that because I think that when it comes to translators uh, or interpreters, um, we are not so lucky all the time to uh, find the very meaning of a complicated terminology thanks to its antagonist on the same text. So we have to rely first on the level of specialty of the text and also on the context. So we could not have been uh, fortunate to see the word factual on the same text. And though we should have been able to understand that it was notional and not national, what does it mean? It means that for a translator, when he is given a translation project, or for an interpreter when he's facing a speech that is specialized, and this word usually is used in finance, in economics, he must uh, have prepared or he must have carried out a certain number of research in order never to fall into the trap of confusion between two similar terms. And uh, so I, I've spoken about the context, which is important, the level of knowledge, so the research that a translator or an interpreter has to, uh, to carry out, but also the question of uh, the very understanding of, uh, of a specialized term. Uh, notional is not the same, as you said, there is no coincidence in the choice of a word in any language. So notional, it is not nominal. Uh, notional in, uh, in economics and in finance is usually the same meaning when it comes to bonds, to inter- uh, interest rate swaps, to interest default swaps. That's the same meaning. But when it comes to interest rates, we cannot use notional. We use only nominal, which is ismi bil uh, Arabi. Uh, because nominal means the interest uh, rate that is not adjusted for inflation. And here comes the other side of the problem. Because when you translate from English into Arabic these kind of words, specialized words, you sometimes find one single solution in Arabic, which is ismi. The problem is that if we had to translate from Arabic into English, the word ismi, which solution would we choose? Notional or or nominal? And this requires a level of understanding of the topic, so research and knowledge. So if we are talking in Arabic about uh, asar al-fa'idah, al-ismiyah, 
In this case, I would, because I know that when it comes to interest rates, it will be nominal. It will never be notional. So I would say nominal interest rate because it is not adjusted for inflation. But if I'm talking about bonds, les obligations, then I have the choice. I can use either nominal in English or notional. And I would prefer notional because notional is exclusively used for bonds. So what do you think about that? And do you also think that since you said that notional is automatically translated into ismi in Arabic, I tend to think that we could use the word nadari for notional, not only uh, ismi. Uh, do you think that Arabic is, doesn't have enough uh, words in, in its vocabulary in order to find solutions for both notions depending on their context? Thank you. Thank you, Sami. I don't know. It will be up to you, uh, Professor Masuri, to take this one, and then we move on, or we can you can accommodate another question. Oh. No, it, well, first of all, let me just greet Mervet and say, let's just hope we can meet again. Uh, you know, and soon. And also, Sammy, uh, yes, I, I, I do remember very well, uh, you know, um, talking together uh, during, you know, the ILO conference. Uh, it's nice to see you. Tikram, wallah, tikram. It's nice to see both of you. Uh, yes, uh, Hamouda, you may, you may, you may they take other questions if you like. I, I, Thank you. I, I'm, I would be happy with that. Thank you. Uh, so. Mohammed, Dr. Mohammed Zaoud. Hello. He's a friend and a colleague. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Ahla sahla. Shukran, Dr. Hamouda. Shukran, Jazilan, Sadiqi Al-Aziz. Wa ashkurak aydan ala tanzim hadihi al-silsida min al-muhadharat al-qayyima jiddan. Wa hada min husn haddi, yani ma'arifatak wa liqa' bik. Wa li su' haddi min al-nahiya al-ukhra adam liqa'i wa ma'arifati bil Dr. Al-Mansouri. ولكن كما قالت زميلتي لا يجب أن نبكي على اللبن المسكوب ربما في قادم الأيام إن شاء الله سؤالي لدي تعليق على مثالين ذكرهما الدكتور المنصوري ثم سؤال يعني بسيط المثالين اللذين أردت التعليق عليهما هو ترجمة شبيحة مثلا طبعا ذكر الإخوة الزملاء يعني الايديولوجي للمترجم او للوسيله الاعلاميه او او الى اخره وذكروا مثال ترجمه المجاهدين في افغانستان ثم عندما تحول الصراع في العراق صاروا يستخدمون مصطلحا اخر وهو الارهابيين مثلا في بما يخص ترجمه مصطلح مثل شبيحه ألا يكفي للمترجم أن يستخدم ما يسمى بال functional equivalence وترجمة شبيحة مثلا prove regime forces for example لكي نتخلص من الايديولوجي وننأى بأنفسنا كمترجمين مثلا عن الوقوف مع أو ضد يعني ايديولوجيا مع أحد الأطراف المصطلح الآخر الذي أردت التعقيب عليه وهو ترجمة إخواني مثلا ذكر الدكتور المنصوري أن نترجم إخواني مثلا إلى مسلم براذر أو أمبر يعني أو مسلم براذر هود أعتقد أن السياق إن صادفنا هذا المصطلح في سياق معين أعتقد أن السياق يكون كفيل بإيضاح المعنى ولا يوجد لبس مثلا في 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 مثل هذه المصطلحات سؤالي الان هو يعني to what extent does the translator have the authority to play with words and to use their own ideology in order to please for example the media institution they work for or the um, institution whatsoever they work for. Yani, uh, 
آه انه ترجم مثلا شبيحه الى ميليشيا او الى مثلا آه يعني آه اي مصطلح يعني يوحي بايديولوجيه المترجم وشكرا جزيلا شكرا دكتور زغوت آه منتصر احمد آه مرحبا السلام عليكم آه هي الشرف آه المشاركه والاستفاده من منكم جميعا من الدكتور منصوري آه سؤالي هو حول ك... آه يعني سؤال واستفسار حول ترجمه الكلمات التي ليس لها آه مرادف في اللغه الانجليزيه يعني مثلا ككلمه آه نصارى هي كلمة وردت في القرآن الكريم لم ترد في القرآن الكريم وإنما اشتقت وردت في القرآن الكريم واشتق منها النصرانية ونصراني فعندما نرجع اللغة الإنجليزية ونترجمها إلى كريستشن فماذا نفعل عند ترجمة مسيحي ومسيحية وإذا وردت كلمة نصراني ومسيحي أو نصرانية ومسيحية في نفس السياق مع العلم بأن في فرق في اللغة العربية بين هذه الكلمات فكيف نتصرف في الترجمة أتمنى السؤال يكون واضح شكرا شكرا نعم السؤال واضح وأخيرا نسرين طلوس Hello uh, Thank you Mr. Mansour for being our guest uh, My question is uh, How did you end up translating Fard uh, Hushud And uh, can you give us more examples of such ironical expressions from Arabic into English? And thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Professor Mansouri. Thank you very much. Thank you all of you for these very interesting questions, some of them quite challenging uh, indeed. Uh, I, I guess uh, it was semi Who, who started and he spoke about the relationship between uh, you know words etc and uh, how we would translate notional uh, and and, and uh, the the importance of the uh, specialization of the text But yes this is uh, 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 the key to it how specialized the text is some terms can be clarified by the context. But let's not forget that the translator sometimes is also acting under pressure, under pressure of time, and sometimes also if a text comes when the translator has done a lot of work, then the translator gets tired. And we need to you know, take into consideration aspects of, of, of fatigue. But let's not forget that some economic texts are not written by experts. Some of them are not experts in the strict sense of, 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 of it. So if there's a, a, a economic uh, event, then you could have you know, media professionals uh, dealing with these aspects according to the availability of these to the, to, to the media. So we need also to take that into consideration. Now there's one tendency among us, uh, 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 translators, when we are under pressure, is to expedite. So when you come across notional, you say, could it be, you know, national? And then you read your sentence and you say, no, I'm not happy with this. It's not national. I mean, why would they be talking about national here? So I believe that the uh, web of, of relations in The, in, in, in the sentence, well, in the sentence, of course, but also in the text should be, uh, um, you know, uh, taken into consideration. Uh, yes, uh, I, I looked into, you know, uh, Navari and Ismi, but I felt that in that particular context, especially in a context of aid uh, during disaster, you have things that you just name, say, we are going to do this, and things that you actually spend. And it is very, very important from the point of view of a Supreme Audit Institution. Supreme Audit Institution here, Al-Jihaz Al-A'la, the Raqaba wal muhasaba to know what is just nominal, that is what has been just, you know, uh, allocated 
uh, on paper and what was allocated uh, in, in um, you know, in, in fact. And of, of course, it is important, and I think it is a good advice here to go to financial instruments, read about swaps and read about futures and, and read about uh, appellations, and also check, uh, because you have uh, online uh, specialized dictionaries uh, used, for, for instance, glossaries for the IMF. So you go there and see whether Isnia, for instance, is there or whether Nodaria is used more in contexts related to supreme audit institutions. Now, Muhammad uh, uh, spoke about uh, the, you know, were well referred to uh, ideo uh, ideology and he proposed, uh, you know, um, functional uh, equivalence, uh, saying that, for instance, regime forces would, would be okay. Yes. Yes, regime forces would be fine, it would be okay. But you know, Shabiha has that, you know, uh, uh, derivation from Shabah. And if I were translating a text, let's say, for a human rights uh, organization, uh, then I would probably indulge this more. If I were translating for a lawyer, if I were, were translating for a victim, I mean, uh, it would be very, very, very difficult to just, you know, uh, give uh, regime uh, forces, even though regime forces uh, may work as a as a suggestion. Um, I, he also referred to Ikhwani. I, I, I thought that Ikhwani in, in certain countries uh, has a, uh, quite a different meaning uh, compared with, with, with other countries. So I'm talking here about really very local uh, contextualization. Uh, well, uh, there's, uh, I guess, well, I have two more questions. One on uh, the translation of words that do not have, uh, you know, what is called equivalent. Uh, you know, I once met with a, with a term uh, in uh, in English that I thought didn't have an equivalent at all, uh, and I looked everywhere. It was in fact a worm called the army worm. Uh, later on, I learned that the army worm here do the tulhash, army translated by hash, and of course worm here at do that. I learned, you know, uh, about this after I had looked into glossaries and I couldn't find it. So I went to specialist uh, literature to read about this. I read texts by agronomists who had to deal with, 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 with this, uh, uh, you know, insect. And, and, and I, I learned it from, from there. Only there uh, did I find uh, the, 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 the right expression, do the hash. So I'm sure that in the literature, if one reads a lot, one will certainly come across, uh, uh, you know, the distinction between uh, Nasrani, Masihi, uh, uh, um, etc. And, and of course, it's always possible for us to say that the language uses, you know, the, the, the origin uses two terms. One term you know, is, is, is there in the literature. The other one has been suggested by this or, 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 or that scholar. Now, Nesrin Talos asked about uh, why or how does one end up translating Fard Hashud? You know, a translator is an inquisitive animal. Uh, uh, to echo Ibn Khaldun in, in, in a different version. The, a, a translator is an inquisitive animal. When I see Fardun Hashud, well, when I hear Fardun Hashud, I set myself the challenge of translating it. Sometimes I mull over it during the night and I wake up at dawn and I, you know, uh, uh, jot something down on a piece of paper. Sometimes you have flashes of genius at dawn. Uh, so uh, again, make sure that you, 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 put, you put that uh, into paper. 
So this is really what makes me, you know, try to translate umana isirihi wa umana isirihi. I said these are, you know, I would say I, I don't really uh, use the adjective beautiful, interesting, you know, things like that because uh, they are about value judgment. But I say this is a great thing I have heard. Can I, you know, try my hand at translating it into English? It gives me trouble, but I do it. And you know, I reap great pleasure. Woman, yisla nar al harbi, wa lam yisla nar al harbi in al muharibu. I I have I have translated one poem about translation, and it is in one of my books about translation. I can't just locate it now, uh, but that that really compares between uh, you know a, a soldier's life and a translator's life. I hope I have covered your your question. Thank you. Yes, y you have. Uh, we have two more requests. Aula and Yusra. Aula, please. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mahmoud, and thank you, our guest. Uh, Muhammad uh, Mansouri, I would like to ask something about um, the reference that I would resort to trace the exact uh, meaning of the term uh, according to which I'm going uh, to, to, to even interpret or translate because um, uh, we are talking in the field of translation here, not exactly uh, interpreting because I, I don't have the time to trace this exact meaning, whether to, to resort to um, Arabic Arabic dictionary or uh, even uh, English English dictionaries uh, to trace the meanings of authentic ones like al wajiz al wasit and so on or al mu'jiz but some terms do not uh, or are not included uh, in the dictionaries some some meanings of the term are not included uh, because uh, terms have different connotations according to some contexts so uh, what is the uh, the reference according to which i'm going to translate or pick the right equivalent in the other language and thank you hola yusra hi mr mansouri it's a pleasure to have you among us today it was a very informative talk and I've learned a lot from you. I don't have a question. It's rather a thank you note for your professor. Um, I was a student of yours in aggregation in the Faculty of Letters of Manuba, and you're one of the main reasons why I switched to masters in translation, especially that uh, I witnessed your passion and effort on teaching this field of study. And of course, many thanks to Dr. Hamouda for you know, making this uh, online talks possible. Thank you. Thank you, Yusra. Nada. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Monsieur Mansouri, for uh, the insights. I'm sorry, internet kept dropping, so we lost some crucial parts, mainly about uh, the equivalence of Zabaniyat uh, al-Hukum, Azlam al-Nidam, and Jack Voyle if I'm spelling it right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, over to you again, Professor Mansouri. Uh, thank you all very much for your questions and thank you for the thanks. <laughs> thank you for the greetings, uh, Yusra. Uh, it's nice to you know, see you again and hear your voice. Uh, you know, I always appreciate occasions of being able to, uh, you know, connect again with uh, um, cohorts that uh, graduated from uh, Manuba and other uh, institutions. I have a question that was put to me by Ola. Um, she's, uh, you know, trying to see uh, how one would go about um, uh, pinning down uh, the meaning of a, of a, of a given term and, and where to, to find it. Uh, this is not the case of interpretation where you have to act on the spot, but it is the case of translation where you can, you know, um, have several uh, 
strips to the to the to the dictionary. Now you, you have uh, lots of um, uh, online dictionaries that, that that you can consult. Uh, when I started doing translation, I started with you know the uh, hard copy versions of dictionaries. And it was really not just a hard copy, but also it was a hard time for me. And uh, uh, what I, what I do when I when I translating a text and I, I come across a difficult term, I you know look into these online dictionaries. But it always helps to read about the subject. You know, consider reading a report. You know, sometimes a report can really tell you a lot. And you see how these are used. Uh, um, uh, Dr. Salhi is familiar with corpora. Of course, you know, corpora can, 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 can help a lot. And, and there are now, you know, you have software that really can help you, especially with, you know, texts that, that, that you can find in, 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 in several places and that tend to deal with, uh, with the, uh, a subject that, that is, you know, um, similar. Uh, so I think looking for the right equivalent, by the way, equi equivalent is, is again, as a term is, is problematic, uh, as we see the equivalency also the function and, and things like that. But read about it, not just look into the dictionaries, read about it, read a document about it, read, for example, if it is about economics, read a report about economics. You know, these things help. Sometimes if you're stuck, call a specialist, call an expert, call an engineer, call a professor, call a teacher. They may be in the same boat as you, they may find themselves grappling with the same difficulty, and they may tell you, when you get the meaning, kindly share that with me. So, but it's, it's good to read about the subject. Now, Neda, uh, but I'm, I'm sorry that, that you, you had trouble with, with, with the internet. Um, I, I thought you uh, mm, uh, referred to Zabani, to Nidam, and things like that. Uh, you know, I tried to translate Zabani, to Nidam by the regime henchmen. And the term exists, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a common term for Zebania, uh, and, and it, it can be used in, in, in several contexts. Um, I don't know whether you, you, you can, you know, in, in, in a different context, you may think of, uh, uh, you know, head squads and things like that, then you can also uh, check this. But if it is about these, then these are the, 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 uh, the stooges. Of a, of a regime, the henchmen that, that implement what the regime tells them to do in terms of violent action and in, in uh, you know, muzzling mouths. Uh, I thought you also mentioned something that sounded to me like jack of all trades. A jack of all trades who was sahibu alfi sana'atin wa sana. But when I had to translate Fardun Hashud, I thought this is not a jack of all trades because there is a sequel to jack of all trades in, Eng in English, that means, that says, and master of none. Sahibu alfi sana'atin wa sana'ah, lakinnahu la yatakamu bi wahida. So, I, I really try to avoid uh, trades, to trans there's also the expression to wear many hats, which, which can also be, uh, be used. I hope I have responded to the questions. Uh... Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, two more requests. Mervit again, and then Shaima. Gizani. Please, yes. Shaima. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Greetings, sir. We cannot hear you well. Shaima, can you... Come closer to the mic, please. Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. hello. Yes, but still. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm here. Right to you. We can hear. Can you hear me? Try to speak, yes. We. I'm going. Is it better? A little bit better, yes. Go ahead, please. 
Hello, everyone. Thank you so yes, for better. this fruitful conversation. Thank you. Uh, well, my question is, how do we translate local proverbs in novel or in literature in general? How can we translate them, the local proverbs? Should we look for the approximate meaning or should we just try to put uh, the equivalent meaning of that proverb? And thank you. Thank you. Mervet. شكرا جزيلا لعطاء الكلمة مرة ثانية وعفوا لو كنت باخذ من وقتكم هي دقيقة واحدة وراح البس قبعة المستغل وفي هذه الحالة انا سالعب دور المترجمة المستغلة بعد اذنكم دكتور منصوري انا بستغل حمودة في اني اطلب منك امام الجميع انه انا بعمل لقاءات ومش بنفسك يا حمودة لقاءاتي ودية واسمها انتربريت شات دكتور منصوري أنا مش هسيب حضرتك أنا هعمل معك لقاء قريب ده اللي هو دعوة على الهوى فأنا أسفة يا حمودة وبعتذر عن هذا الطلب وأتمنى الدكتور منصوري يقبل طلبي ورجائي شكرا لكم شكرا جزيلا آه عفوا آه أعتقد لا توجد آه طلبات أخرى وبالتالي وقد حانت الساعة الثانية والنصف وموعد انتهاء هذا اللقاء الشيق أعيد الكلمة إلى أستاذنا الفاضل ليعلق ويعقب ومن ثم سأخذ دقيقة أو دقيقتين أقول فيها كلمة الختام وننهي هذا اللقاء لنبدأ لقاء آخر تفضل أستاذ Uh, sir, your mic is off. Yes. Can you no. can you can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, now. Okay. Thank you. Well, well, well. First, first of all, thank thank you very much for your comments and for um, you know expressions of appreciation. Um, now to just start with 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 Mervet before I you know go back to Shayma's question. Yes, uh, Mervet, you can uh, count on me. Uh, for 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 a chat, my uh, only fee uh, would be a cup of coffee, and that's it. لما نروح أدس على راسي من فوق والله على راسي يا بني قريمك. Yeah yeah, I I haven't converted into a consultant yet, but you know I I will check. If it you know if I manage with you, if it succeeds, then then I will probably make it a business. Now, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Shayma, uh, you asked about local proverbs, uh, and, 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 and especially in, in a translation of literature. You know, uh, some people have tried to give equivalence to, to proverbs. Uh, you can check. Uh, uh, you know, certain uh, translations. Uh, most of the time, they find a, a, a proverb that is close to the uh, local proverb, and they and they and they use it. But at other times, you know, some proverbs are so colourful in in the language, and you're dealing with literature. If you're translating for literature you should not really lose that local flavor. If you come upon an equivalent that really gets your meaning across, then you give that, that equivalent. But in literature, you're allowed to note that the basic metaphor on which this proverb is based is this one. Uh, there are various various ways of saying um, uh, from the uh, the fire pan to the fire, from the fire pan to the fire. In 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 dialect in Tunisia we have harab mal qatraja tahtimizad, right? Uh, from the frying pan to, to to the fire. If if you want, you can if you you want you can translate it. That's say in a newspaper or something by. Uh, um, 
من المقلاة إلى النار. The meaning, the meaning will be there. But it is not as colorful, you know, as Harab al so in literature, you could probably say in a footnote that I'm used for the parties. It's quite enriching, I think, and it's also it delights your, your reader. So if you're, in, you're, you're, you're allowed to indulge a, a little bit and write uh, substantially, uh, that is the equivalent in Arabic, of course, if it is a highly literary text, you could say, كَلْ مُسْتَجِيرِ مِنَ الرَّمْضَاءِ بِالنَّارِ كَمَنِ اسْتَجَارَ مِنَ الرَّمْضَاءِ بِالنَّارِ فَفَرَّ مِنَ الْحَرِّ الشَّكَ الْمُسْتَجِيرِ مِنَ الرَّمْضَاءِ بِالنَّارِ I think أعتقد انقطع الصوت استاذ منصور محمد اي ثينك الصوت متقطع وي ار دان اوكي ثانك يو فيري ماتش اشكرك سيدي الكريم شكرا جزيلا وعلى قبول الدعوه على هذا اللقاء الذي استمتعنا فيه حقيقه فاذا اردت ان اعطي له عنوانا فيكون عنوان الامتاع والمؤانسه أه أخذتنا في هذه الرحلة من جديد وأنا مهوس بصورة الرحلة والترحال والسفر والسفر لأنني أرى المترجم ما هو إلا مسافر زاده المعرفة وهو يقطع ألاف الأميال ليصل إلى أماكن وبلاد بعيدة جدا أماكن وبلاد بعيدة ينبغي أن يعد يعد لها العدة جيدا لأنه عندما ينتقل إلى بلاد بعيدة نائية لا يعرفها مثلما كان ابن خلدون ينتقل ويدون ما يلاحظه وما يراه من مشاهدات حيث حل فالمترجم هو أيضا عندما يرتحل وأنا سعيد جدا بأن يكون فيما بيننا اليوم أناس أصدقاء وزملاء شاهدوا مشاهداتهم والتقوا بضيفنا الكريم في أماكن عدة أديس وغير أديس ومنظمة العمل الدولية وغير ذلك فالمترجم هو يرتحل إلى أماكن بعيدة وهو مدعو إلى أن يترجم المحلي بالبعيد والعكس بالعكس وعادة ما لا تكون هذه البلدان وهذه اللغات ذات صلة ببعضها البعض وبالتالي يصعب أمر النقل ويصعب أمر التعريب أي التوطين والتغريب وفي هذا السفر وهذه الرحلة لأنه يذهب ويعود يذهب ويعود المترجم لأنه لا يستطيع أن يترجم إذا ما ذهب ولم يعد فالمترجم يعني ميزته ونعمته أنه صاحب ألف صنعة وصنعة وحتى بالتونسي عندنا مثال ربما يصلح هنا أنه حوكي وحريري وهو يشتغل بالحرير أيضا ويحيك لأن المترجم هو صائغ حتى من الصياغة صائغ جاية من الصياغة والصياغة في تونس هي للدرر والذهب والذهب وهو يتعامل مع ذهب أيضا وصنعته بالذهب يقال قديما إن اليهود أو اليهودي عندما يموت يوصي ابنه بثلاثة أعمال يمتهنها ومنها الترجمة واللغة لأنهم ولأغلب الناس الذين يرتحلون لا يأتمنون الزمان فعندما يسافر يحمل معه هذه الصنعة صنعة اللغة تذهب معه بالإضافة إلى صنعة الذهب فيمكن أن يحمل الذهب مثلما هرب وخرج اليهود من مصر والهروب أيضا وتحدثت سيدي الكريم عن الهروب إسكيب ومعانيه ومعانيها المتعددة
المترجم هو صاحب ألف صنعة وصنعة وهو يحملنا في رحلة فقد كان عندي سؤال أردت أن أسأله في هذه الرحلة رحلة المترجم والرحلة التي التي حملتنا فيها أو علمتني مركبك وزورقك اللطيف الجميل رحلة في الترجمة الأدبية في ترجمة الأمثال في الانتقال وحتى الترجمة التقنية وهي فنية في في باطنها أيضا ظاهرها فني تقني ولكن باطنها فني أدبي أيضا وهذا ما بدأت به كلامي في البداية إن الترجمة أو مواطن الإبداع في النصوص لا تخلو لا يخلو منها أي نص حتى وإن كان نصا فنيا علميا تقنيا قدمت هذه الرحلة على أنها رحلة في المشاق وكيف نتخطى هذه المشاق والصعوبات challenges and tips this is the title of your presentation كنت أود أيضا أن نقدمها في صورتها الأخرى أيضا وهي الإمتاع والمؤانسة والمتعة يعني متعة الترجمة ف كنت استمتعت بمحاضرتك وعندما اختتمت قولك وقلت language will never cease to surprise and delight us وكان ذلك ختاما مسك والختام مسك والمسك لطيف جميل فأردت فقط أن أقدم العمل الترجمي على أنه عمل ممتع شاق صحيح يحتاج إلى بحث وأعداد عدة وسلاح ولكنه ممتع متعة السفر والرحلة ربما أحيل إليك الكلمة أستاذ منصوري لتقول كلمة أخيرة قبل أن نختتم هذا اللقاء الجميل اللطيف الشيق تفضل أولا أبدأ كلمتي بتقديم الشكر الجزيل لأنك منحتني هذه الفرصة وايضا اود ان اشكر الحضور على اسهاماتهم وعلى اسئلتهم والاسئله في الواقع هي منطلقات بالنسبه الي كل سؤال هو منطلق وكل سؤال يجعلني اجد في البحث اكثر حتى تكون اجابتي اجابه شافيه ضافيه مقنعه او مقره بقصورها وفي حاجة إلى مزيد الإضافة إليها أمامي الآن قصيدة أحمد فارس الشدياق وقد كان مترجما يقول فيها ومن فاته التعريب لم يدري ما العناء ولم يصل نار الحرب إلا المحارب أرى ألف معنى ما له من مجالس لدينا وألفا ما له من مناسب وألفا من الألفاظ دون مرادف وفصلا مكان الوصل والوصل واجب وأسلوب إيجاز إذا الحال تقتضي أساليب إثناب لتوع المطالب إلى غير ذلك And I tried my hand at translating this into English This is how it reads One who hasn't been in translation throws can hardly claim to have felt sore, for only a warrior knows the scalding fire of war. I see a host of authors' arts, which in translation I can only mar. I see a score of speech parts for which I cannot find a spar. Thumma, khatamtu qasidatahu bi'idhafah, fa'aqool, But though I often agonize, great joy I feel and feel it true. For upon every match I tryingly devise, and upon every catch I honorously woo, from ritual death I truly rise and feel I'm born as often in you. This is, uh, I, 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 I thought these would be the last. Uh, ما أجمل أن ينتهي الكلام ما أجمل أن ينتهي الكلام بحلاوة الشعر ما أجمل أن ينتهي الكلام بحلاوة الشعر أراكم قريبا في لقاءات أخرى نتحدث فيها في حديث على ضفاف الترجمة لقاؤنا المقبل سيكون عند الساعة 
السادسه او السابعه عفوا مساء من مساء هذا اليوم بتوقيت تونس مع الشيخ العلامه حمزه يوسف وهو سيحدثنا عن ترجمه الخطاب الديني الاسلامي الى غير العرب وهو من الشيوخ المعتدلين واسس كليه سماها كلية الزيتونة تأثرا بجامع الزيتونة في تونس وهو أمريكي اعتنق الإسلام وتأثر بالإسلام الوسطي المالكي الشمال أفريقي في موريتانيا أساسا وقضى سنين في صحراء موريتانيا يتعلم فيها من القبائل هناك العربية والثقافة وتعاليم الدين إذا آه نلتقي وكلكم مدعونا بالتأكيد إلى الحضور والمساهمة في الحوار والنقاش آه إلى اللقاء ونراكم في لقاءات أخرى إن شاء الله مع السلامة